Hi, I'm Gabriel Hernandez. Uh, this is Watcher DM, and today I'm going to be going over the uh, adventure Warlock Joe's Snakes in a Dungeon uh, that we released in 2022. It was written by Jesse Brown, illustrated by his brother Paul. Uh, I did a little bit of illustration in the um, second half here and design. And we did do some generated art from Mid Journey for this uh, two page adventure. It's pretty small. I mostly used it for texture. Uh, this is one, the most recent in a series of adventures featuring Warlock Joe, aka Josiah Dark Soul, uh, who is an epic level master of the arcane arts. He can basically be replaced by any of your, you know, if you have a. Um, Crazy Wizard or Elminster style wizard in your setting, Fizban, if you will. Um, Warlock Joe is kind of a nice stand in for some of those. Uh, or you can really lean into having Josiah Dark Soul be a presence in your uh, adventuring world, and he can provide lots and lots of adventure, kind of bespoke adventuring, if you will. He's a little, um, he likes to make custom adventures and put adventurers through them to see how they're working. So you, you never know if you're beta testing something for Warlock Joe. Uh, in this adventure, it is designed for uh, four to six characters of level five. It plays in about three to four hours. It is 5e compatible. Um, and it kind of follows the Jayquay style, uh, five room dungeon style of adventure. Go ahead and get started here in area one with the portal to adventure. This is where you... Meet Warlock Joe, and he's got a readable blurb here um, to kind of get you into his character. Hark, adventurers! Folks call me Warlock Joe. First things first. What, are, what level are you? Four? Five? Yeah, you look like level fives. How would you kids like to go on an adventure in an exclusive, never-before-seen dungeon? I don't want to give anything away. Well, let's just say you might be surprised by what you see on the other side. <laughs> yeah! Uh, yeah, so Joe promises there is amazing treasure and beautiful vistas to behold, but uh, he won't tell the adventurers much more beyond that, although they can probably figure out uh, from his elongated S's, uh, he's going he's gonna to ham it up. Uh, they can pop through the dungeon, and or pop through the portal, and end up in Area 2, which is the Snake Temple entrance. This place is a little bit interesting in that it has... The potential for some combat, although the everything in here will be peaceful unless the party attacks it. So this is kind of a test of the party's um, reaction to serpents. And there is a friendly black king snake named Stranger who can help them find some treasure if they'll help him find some food. Um, this can be achieved using uh, speak with animals or animal handling, but Stranger himself cannot be harmed with weapons. Uh, or magic. He is just not on the table to be killed. So if the party tries to attack and kill him, he just gets away and, and goes away. Uh, moving on, you end up in the snake trap hallway. This is a fun room in that it uh, it is a trap in the middle of the room. Pressure plate. First time it's pressed, does nothing. Second time it's pressed, uh, a bunch of snakes fly in like projectiles, uh, biting things in the air. So it's snake arrows. Um, and the party will, you know, have to deal with taking some poison damage there. And also when the trap is sprung, uh, the snake arrows pile up at either end of the hallway, producing two swarms of poisonous snakes, uh, that they then have to deal with. So it's a trap plus combat, which is a pretty fun encounter to run. Um, and yeah, it's a nice, nice fun stuff to do here. Pressure plates. Can't beat them. Moving on into area four, the snake riddle atrium. Uh, this is another social encounter um, where a coatl is relaxing in a pool of fresh water. Um there's a lotus and some other, you know, set dressing. Um, Ame, the coatl, is a divine creature. And if the players can answer her riddle, will give uh, them access to her healing magic. This is going to be a great opportunity to get rid of any kind of 
curses or poisonous stat, yeah, statuses or anything like that uh, that the party have accumulated so far. Um, and yeah, you know, kind of test your, your party's willingness to say the words snake. <laughs> Uh, of course, you can always swap out the the riddle here, um, and I prefer to play a may as kind of uh, you know ever patient, um, but maybe kind of aloof. So, uh, but she will not fight, and uh, preferring to flee uh, if she is attacked. Uh, and moving on from this area, you go into area five, the Snake Boss Sanctum. This place is uh, kind of a cool room in that it's a large room and the combat takes place kind of on two planes, if you will. There is uh, the top of 20 foot high raised platform uh, with a balcony that overlooks the room below. And there's kind of two massive columns reaching from the floor to the ceiling on either side. Um, and yeah, there's some staircases leading up to that 20 foot high race platform. So the fight can happen from above or from below. The balcony provides cover uh, at, at some level. So half cover if the attacker is at the same elevation, three quarters cover if the attacker is below. That's described here. And the thing you're dealing with is kind of twofold. It's Isfet and Asfet, which are the cultists who are worshiping Apophis or what they believe to be Apophis. Um, and Apophis themselves, a 15-foot long red and black banded snake with humanoid head and dirty stringing hair, veiling her lidless glowing emerald eyes. She functions as a spirit naga, but she has three legendary resistances. So this is another good example of if you want a you know single boss enemy to kind of have a little more punching weight uh, against a party, Given some legendary resistances, three per day should be enough to prevent some of those takedown spells from going off and uh, deplete them from the party a little bit. So we've added that here. Um, the Golden Mouse uh, will basically, if you get the Golden Mouse in, in room two, um, you can kind of use it here to distract Apophis for uh, as long as it takes for it to escape. So it basically is a three-round delay in her attacks. Um, and then it's kind of got uh, some triggers here. So combat one, uh, Apophis will ready an action to upcast Lightning Bolt. Isfet and Asfet will cast Shillelagh, then Entangle, then move to cover. Um, and that's when her uh, Lightning Bolt goes off. And then in subsequent rounds she'll try to continue casting lightning bolts. Um, and the idea is to restrain the party in a line and, uh, and then use produce flame um, and lightning bolts try and, try and get them. Uh, the story behind Isfet and Asfet is actually also written here. And I like that we have in this adventure kind of produced some little NPC dossiers. You'll see that in some of the other adventures that we cover later. This is worth about 4,800 XP. Divided up across the party. And then we have the, uh, after the, the combat, you go into area six, which is revelation and reward. And this is where they step outside of the uh, snake temple and realize that they are actually on a snake planet. They have been <laughs> teleported to a snake dimension. Uh, because, of course, Warlock Joe wouldn't just make a snake dungeon without making a snake dimension first. Um, everything is snakes, the clouds, the trees, the ground. So kind of like the uh, Rick and Morty episode where everything is on a cob, everything is a snake in, uh, in area six. Um, there's a treasure chest here. Uh, of course it's decorated to look like a snake's head. Uh, and it has a trap in it. Uh, and the trap is pretty dangerous. It's a 12 D six. It does 42 points of damage on a failed save. Um, so it is a, a heavily poisoned trap and inside is some pretty valuable stuff. Uh, a thousand gold pieces, a scroll, uh, a plane shift uh, of plane shift and a bag of devouring made of snakeskin. So this bag of devouring here, we do have an alternate ending where uh, Apep 
the actual uh, entity that is supposed to be worshipped here, not Apophis, um, will offer to uh, basically become a patron for one of the party members. And so to support that, we've provided a um, warlock patron, the serpent, uh, as defined here. And so this comes, this uh, adventure comes with a player option for the serpent warlock patron. Of course, we provide stat blocks here uh, for all the different things you'll find with the modifications as described in the adventure. And uh, yeah, nice, fast, five-room adventure. Of course, you'll find our uh, usual encounter types and XP recommendations um, for the adventure. And if you print out these two pages, they can, uh, on, on a single 8.5 by 11, you can fold them up into a single... Uh, pamphlets and take them with you so they're great for on-the-go GMing and just pulling out something uh, if you need to. Um, so really fun adventure, uh, Warlock Joes. Uh, and again, thanks for watching all the way through. I hope you had fun and uh, I look forward to covering the rest of the Warlock Joes series for you. Uh, if you've played this adventure and you had any kind of interactions or found something uh, unique or, you know, crazy or want to argue about something, feel free to do so in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, keep an eye out as we'll be coming out with more of these adventure guides going forward. Uh, you can also find us on drivethroughrpg.com, itch.io, and of course at watcherdm.com. Uh, or on Patreon. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Stay weird.